everyone, welcome to another Grafana Office Hours. As always, I'm Nicole von der Hooven, Developer Advocate at Grafana Labs. And on this show, we normally talk about the observability of computer systems. But today, we're talking about observability of a different nature. Our guests today have built a platform hey, called Theoscope that uses Grafana, among other things, to collect and analyze images from microscopes. But let's get over and get introductions out of the way with this guy over here that uh -oh. you might already know. <laughs> I think you're pointing at me. Hey, everyone. Yes. I'm Paul Baylog, another one of the developer advocates uh, here at Grafana Labs. And then, you know, you can put in the comments that I'm your favorite. I'd appreciate it. <laughs> Nicole's know, been mean to me again you today. To say it. <laughs> if you have to prompt people to say it, is it really true? You know, you got to think about these things. <laughs> well, welcome to the, the bashing Paul show. That's right. This it's the Paul bashing over hour. Here, over here. Oh, man. I'm so bad at this, like with the mirroring. Down below is Mikhail Volkov. Welcome, Mikhail. He is from Volkov Labs and also a Grafana champion. Hello, everyone. And over there, Chris Field, president, and a lot of other things for Thea Scientific. <laughs> Welcome, to both of you. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Before we get into what we were going to talk about, we have a few announcements. We had a couple releases. I don't. Let's see if Paul's been paying attention. What are the two releases that have come out this week, Paul? <laughs> Surprise well, I'm, test. I'm glad you asked. Uh, yeah, no. <laughs> we had the Grafana agent version. Oh, 0. you are totally looking at the talking points. You didn't really know that. Oh, okay. come on now. I knew that one. But the <laughs> one I really knew too was uh, K6. We just uh, released that. Uh, what was that last week? Uh, version 0 0.48. And we still like those zeros on the front end, the bumpers. Um, just, you know. <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> So there are a few um, improvements to Grafana Agent's flow mode. There are now some new OTEL components that are worth checking out, just getting closer and closer to pretty much just being a flat OTEL, collect, uh, OTEL collector distribution. And um, K6 has a K6 new command and a bunch of other um, improvements to Grafana Cloud K6, including performance insights for browser testing new in this release um also some videos i don't know if, if if either of you mikhail and chris have seen this docu series that we've got it's actually really cool it's like for the 10th anniversary and the last one just came out and it is all about community i even got a little teary-eyed i mean mikhail actually stars in it so i know. was just gonna <laughs> point that out isn't he actually in this uh the last uh version yeah. or the last uh episode yeah, I, was there. I was there Such there was celebrity. actually one community call uh, like three years ago and i was so it looked different so different than now <laughs> so it was, like, it was totally different face but it was one of the best community calls i have ever had with marcus and ryan oh marcus also yeah, Marcus was there three years yeah. ago. Yeah, it was my, yeah. Marcus and Ryan McKinney. You've been around the Grafana ecosystem for a very long time. <laughs> this is where I started, and uh, I had the troubles with uh, Redis data source, which we developed. So I have asked a lot of questions, and since then I started working on one data source, one panel at the time, and now we have ten of them. Well, actually, let's um, let's hmm. let's talk about that because how did you even get started with Grafana? Do you do you remember? I do actually. It's uh, uh when I was asked this question on, for interview, and it was like a big interview. It's ten minutes interview or fifteen minutes interview, and they got just the seconds. Uh, I started um, when we did uh, already Enterprise performance testing. Uh, at, uh, we tried to achieve two hundred million iteration per second, and it was a really high throughput. It was like mm -hmm. a groundbreaking one. And we, there is, was no way how you can measure it with the standard tool. So we, just, we started to use Grafana for that. And we posted a blog about it. And uh, since then, it was 2019. And since then, we started to use Grafana more and more for internal projects. And when a Redis time series was created we did, and uh, with the new Grafana backend platform, it was a, you was able to create your own backend plugins. 
we, we immediately created this Redis data source, which became one of the most popular plugins since then. It's in top 10, it's a 10 millions of downloads. And I'm proud, proud of that one. And uh, since then, I just, uh, when I left Redis, uh, I created Volker Flaps and I started working on the base 64 plugins. This is how I met with Chris when they saw my work with AI and images. And we started working together and we created this platform, which we are going to demonstrate today. Then uh, we created data manipulation plugin, which one of a kind. When Marcus left uh, Grafana Labs, uh, we took over dynamic text. We added CSS, we added JavaScript, and now it's one of pop very popular plugins. Uh, we created Apache chart. And if you saw that is like, what is your best uh, panels in the panel? Yeah. There was time series candlestick. <laughs> I love candlestick. Yeah. It's so different to what uh, Grafana is doing for observability. And there was Apache chart. There was a question, what is your favorite panels? So I, I asked, uh, which one, community or native, right? <laughs> it's a good question <laughs> because there are so And so for, for community, of course, it's Apache chart. And uh, because it's a one panels, if you cannot do something with the native panels, you can always do it with Apache chart or dynamic text. Mm -hmm. And we took calendar as well from Marcus. And now, as I said, we have 10 panels and some very interesting one. And we use, and some of them we use for say scientific. It's a calendar, right? It's a, now we use variable panel, which has became really popular one. And uh, we created it just recently, which allow you to use variables as a panel, not as a top row in Grafana. Mm -hmm. That's funny. I should have looked this up. Oh, God. No, I was going to say when mentioning some of those those favorite panels and that I just one of the things that really stuck out from the video <laughs> was Matt Tobik uh, saying, you know, saying that pie charts, you know, it's like uh, <laughs> friends don't let friends use pie charts or something. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, but people love the pie chart of Donna. It's a favorite visualization <laughs> from Excel. <laughs> What I really wanted to know is, and, and I, I probably should have looked this up, but how many plugins have you actually created for Grafana? I think uh, I mean, we have a uh, community plugins and we have a uh, private plugins. Some of them mm -hmm. like environment data source, it cannot be part of a Grafana cloud. We also mm -hmm. created Balena data source and Balena panel uh, working with the FAIR because this is the IoT platform they use. Uh, it, we didn't submit it uh, to cut catalog. We created a template, but it's it's around 10. And now we are working on new alerting plugin as well, which is nice. our best one mm -hmm. yet. <laughs> wow. Best yet so Mikhail, to come. So Mikhail has been has been creating lots of these plugins for Grafana. How how did you get connected with him, Chris? What were you working on at the time? So um we and by we I mean myself and my brother Kevin, um, who is a professor at the University of Michigan, and we'll you'll see some pictures of him later. He's not joining us today. But we have been working on this concept of real-time microscopy image analysis. And I have been doing a lot of industrial automation and computer vision applications and motion control and stuff like that. And I had this idea and this concept of sort of observability, but from the standpoint of science, right? What is science? What is engineering? And when you're running an experiment, you're observing some kind of physical phenomena and making observations and cataloging it that way. And we quickly realized that we needed something that was customizable. Um, dashboards became a very big thing. And science is all about visualizing things. So we were like, OK, dashboard, customization, and visualization, Grafana is the way we go. We reached out to Grafana. Um, and we're like, hey, I'm not a front end developer. I'm not that kind of person. And my background is more on the instrumentation, very lower level ones and zeros, firmware, hardware kind of things. Um, <clears throat> we need some help. And we we were given Mikhail's um, referral and, and we reached out to him. We saw that he had a blog post that he recently done with a Raspberry Pi and a camera and was displaying those things. And he also had the image panel plug in and we're like, hey, that's exactly what we need is we are looking at images. Um, and Grafana has all these great visualizations for graphs and numerical data, but we've got image data. So can you help us out? And then we started working together on that. And he's like, yep, I can make that happen. And so he's the, our um, person. And I think 
of those 10, we probably use all 10 of them in our platform now. Um, or if not, we will soon <laughs> um, as we roll out new features and, and everything else and, and got from there. So that's kind of how we got started using Grafana and then um, meeting up with uh, Mikhail. And that all happened very much back in the uh, early to 2020 during the pandemic. Seems like forever ago, doesn't it? Uh, yes. yeah. <laughs> it does. Yeah. That's probably a good thing. But yeah. for, for those of us who don't know, who, who are more used to the conventional way of describing observability and not in the scientific context, can you tell us what microscopy even is and what exactly do you do at Thea Scientific? Sure. Um, I have a, a presentation. I don't know if it's live. I can. Um, sure. It's always better with pictures, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's not a presentation. It's a Grafana. Yeah. Yeah. A presentation. It's in Grafana. So it's um, awesome. Mikhail really pushed for this, and, and we put it together, and, and I love it. And because um, I am also tired of, of PowerPoint slides, um, having done all of that through science and such, so yeah. we really wanted to do something else um, in. Grafana. And what we had done, um, we had submitted a dashboard to the beautiful dashboard competition back in um, the spring <laughs> of this year. And um, we were a finalist. And so we were very excited by that. But one of the things was that we really have experienced um, showing our platform is the interactivity. And that's kind of lost when you do just a screenshot or even in a slide. Um, we had did a Grafonicon presentation. And it's really the demo and the interactivity that really kind of um, propels this thing for us. And really, uh, there's that always that aha moment from the scientists when they see it in action. So we wanted to go with a dashboard that kind of shows that and use some of these great panels and plugins and such um, that are developed by Grafana and also the community. And um, Volkov Lab. So we start off with the who. Um, we already had the introductions. This is Kevin Field. Um, he, like I mentioned, he's a professor at the University of Michigan. He's also our vice president of Theus Scientific. He is our microscopist. He is our scientist um, uh, from that standpoint. He doesn't really do too much on the, the back end or the front end other than tell us what would look good, what would work good. Um, he is our customer zero. And yes, we are brothers. I am the older one. He is the younger one. So you asked, what is microscopy? Um, we start with Kevin's research and with his work. This is back um, when he was a graduate student at the University of Wisconsin in Madison. And this is a transmission electron microscope. Uh, it's sort of, these are three different versions of it. This one's at the University of Wisconsin. This one is uh, a Titan TEM. So this one is probably, uh, I don't know where this one's at. Kevin would know. And then this one is a, a Hitachi from um, Argonne National Laboratory. But this is a kind of an example. Each one of these is anywhere from a half a million to $2 million instrument. They are, they range in age and sort of legacy. So um, an electron microscope, you're able to see the individual atoms of things on there. So you're beyond what a normal optical microscope would look like. Instead, you're using a beams of electrons to image your samples. And they, <clears throat> They range in, in sort of age. So these are probably all from the early 2000s. We've encountered Windows XP, Windows 7, Windows 10, um, and even a Windows 95 computer that's still out there that is running these uh, <laughs> instruments. So we need something that <clears throat> can, because when you purchase one of these microscopes, they're kind of dipped in concrete at that point, right? Whatever the state of electronics is and the science at that time is, is what they are. So you can see you have some of the older cathode ray tube monitors and such like that, but they're all still kind of the same. Um, and what they really are though is, is a camera. They're taking pictures, but they're taking them on the atomic scale. Um, so we were interested in, okay, how do we address these problems or what is the problem and how do we address it? So what happens is, is a, a, a scientist will sit at one of those microscopes and they will collect anywhere from a handful of images to thousands of images over the course of an hour to eight hours. So you're sitting, you've booked out time on there and you'll get these sort of grayscale images that you see here. And then what they have to do after the acquisition part is they have to count all of the black dots in that image. And they have to draw the box around there and measure the size of each of those boxes. And that's what we call quantitation. So in one image, you can have anywhere from zero to a thousand black dots that you then have to manually draw a box around 
count in size. But the idea is that you then get your plot, your visualization of that distribution of your size, and that leads to your discovery. That leads to what the scientists are ultimately looking for, and maybe the Nobel Prize, right? That's what they're all trying to go for in that kind of situation. So the workflow that has been going on for a long time now is <clears throat> no one wants to sit there and draw boxes around a thousand black dots, right? So this is a, but there's been all these great cloud-based technologies around artificial intelligence and that can automate this quantitation process that could draw those boxes for you and do the counting and then display them. However, those are all cloud-based developments. Those are all happening with cloud resources. And those are things that you don't necessarily have access to at the microscope. You, know, right? you have these older systems that maybe don't even have ethernet in them, or you don't want your multi-million dollar instrument with access to the internet, right? Um, we have noticed though that that is changing over time and that is happening. So what will generally happens though, is you will be at your microscope, you'll collect those images, and you will, if you're fortunate, you will put those onto a thumb drive and you'll walk them back to your office, you'll get coffee, you'll answer some emails, you'll give a presentation, you'll go on to Facebook or LinkedIn or whatever, and then six months later, you finally come back <laughs> to actually quantitating that data and visualizing it. Um, we have encountered some microscopes that still burn to a CD and you walk them um, back on CDs even. So there's a whole bunch of uh, stuff that happens here, but all of this is happening offline and you don't get the cloud resources there and you can't necessarily use those models or all of that, all of that amazing technology at the microscope. So what we set out to do was, okay, we know we can automate the quantitation, but can we do it at the microscope while the scientist is running the microscope and how does that work? And what does that need to do in order to solve these um, this issues? And so that led, as I mentioned earlier, to why Grafana or <clears throat> to what we came up with as a platform that we call the Theoscope. So the Thea is the Greek tightness of vision. So it's a, a vision scope is where that comes from or vision scientific. And we chose Grafana in this case because, as I mentioned at the beginning, customization, visualization, and then this concept of heterogeneous data sources. Mikhail was talking about this a little bit earlier. He's got all the different um, panel plugins, but also data sources. You can pull in Reddits, you can pull in Postgres, you can pull in all of these other components um, in there, and you can put that all into a single interface. I know Grafana talks about the single pane of glass for observability. Can we apply that same concept to scientific experiments and to the microscopy sort of world um, as we do this? I so, have a question. Uh, yep. Um, when it comes to, you said that at the at the end, just before the Nobel Peak Prize is discovery. What sort of things do you discover? Like, is this medical stuff, or what are those little black dots? Yeah. So, as an example, um, what Kevin is his overall research is. So, um, scientists are not in the business of this quantitation part. That is a a, a step to get to the end result, right? Um, but what they are ultimately trying to do, and in this example here, is these black dots are defects in a material, and specifically a steel material that's being hit with radiation. And they're looking at the resilience of that material as a, as a um, component for the new generation of nuclear reactors. So if you think about like a thorium salt or um, these high temperature reactors or any of these small modular reactors that you're hearing about maybe for green and clean energy around the world, they all have different conditions than the reactors that were built back in the 60s. So they need new materials to house these um, new reactors in and they wanna make sure that they don't leak or they don't corrode and all those kinds of things and they're resistant to that. So what Kevin does in his research and his research group and his students and throughout his career is they will take a sample of a steel or an alloy of some kind, they'll hit it with radiation and they'll watch the growth of these defects. So if there's more defects over time growing, then that's not a good material compared to another material for a new nuclear reactor. So the discovery is what is that sort of amalgam of different alloys or different materials going to be that yields the best corrosion resistant material for a nuclear reactor. That is one example. What we have found is that anything that can take a picture works. 
in this um, concept and works with our platform. So we've done some um, wound healing. We watch cells migrate towards the, a wound and we see, does this drug inhibit or accelerate wound healing? Um, and is a biomedical sort of uh, interaction. Another more broader one would be um, in pathology, is this cancerous or not cancerous? You're trying to identify cells. And what we provide is to the doctor that's making that determination is a complementary information, right? They're looking at it, they're making a judgment call. Our system can say, okay, I think it's cancerous with this level of confidence. Do you agree? Do you concur with that sort of analysis? So we've been able to do that. We've also hooked up uh, this to our ring doorbell and we counted cars driving by um, or when a package has arrived, oh, cool. we've alerted for that um, or counted the squirrels and which squirrels were eating <laughs> the pumpkins during Halloween. These kinds of things can also be done um, with this process because it is anything that takes a camera, anything that takes a picture. But from a science standpoint, it's the materials, and that's mostly driven from Kevin's research work. But we've also looked at um, and are moving into sort of the bio field and looking at um, plant growth and uh, cellular growth for the bioenergy and um, bioeconomy that's um, coming up from the Department of Energy of the United States. Hmm. Uh -huh. So what is this platform? So <laughs> uh, we can kind of get into the, the, the details a little bit here. So our overall awesome. concept is the real-time microscopy image analysis. So we know we can do the AI and apply it with these cloud resources to the images to automate the quantitation to get to our discoveries. But can we do it at the microscope? Can we do it while the scientist is playing with the microscope while they're trying to get the best image possible on the screen? Can we observe the experiments while they're working on there? And then can we do that in a way that can be run on any instrument that has running anything from Windows XP on up to um, the latest and greatest uh, software from there? So can we bring some of these cloud technologies to the microscope? Um, for these scientists and engineers? And the answer is yes, um, you know, sort of long, short answer to um, what will become a long question. But what we ended up doing is we ended up applying various parts of the Grafana stack and the observability stack to address this. I'm gonna take a moment to breathe and take this drink of water and I can have <laughs> the Kyle uh, sort of take over to discuss the various parts and components that make this up um, for, for the, the real-time microscopy. Yeah, so the main component of visualization is the Grafana, which we use with multiple panels and data sources. We use Prometheus for all kind of metrics we collect from a ray cluster, from Postgres database, and uh, from a GPU uh, to see is how the uh, if the models is uh, uh, have to process these images, how fast the uh, GPU is to process, and what is the frame rate we can get. Can we get like a 30 frames per second or, or even more? We use live streaming. Uh, live streaming, it's a great uh, plugin, WebSocket plugin. From a, it's a community plugin. What it does, uh, uh, for example, for GPU, uh, because we, we process AI models on GPU, we want to know how fast uh, or GPU uh, pro progress and uh, process with images. And Prometheus is great as a long-term solution when you see that. But if you want something real time, it's a uh, it's a live streaming, and uh, uh, maybe audience knows that Grafana can get this data from a data sources, and it have to refresh the whole dashboard to see the new data. But there is a new technology which was introduced in Grafana eight. It calls streaming, when the panel connected to the data source. Uh, with data source, uh, there is a special kind of data sources. They can stream data, and the panel listen for this kind of events, and it display the data as it arrives. So what it gives to you that you have these panels, you have your dashboard, and the more and uh, all these panels live have their life cycle. But these panels, which they marked with a green circle, they all streaming panels, and they come in uh, real time with the micro milliseconds latency. So this is a great, great plugin from a WebSocket, and we use it, and community allows it to use it as well. Uh, as, a, as the main data source uh, of the data, we use Postgres SQL with a time scale database. Time scale database, it's an extension for Postgres SQL. And uh, we have one of the video at Walker Flaps what that Postgres SQL is the best partner for Grafana. 
because uh, for in time scale DB you can uh, keep your time scale data. In the PostgreSQL, SQL, you keep your all kind of data and you query it with SQL. And uh, Grafana internal database can be stored in SQLite, which is a default, or it can uh, for if, if you want to use external database and especially for high availability, you can use PostgreSQL SQL or MySQL. And because we use PostgreSQL for data already, it makes sense to store Grafana internal database in Postgres as well, which is why it's the ultimate partner for Grafana. And the one we are looking at is, is the Loki for the logs. We have a lot of logs coming in from Ray cluster. And Ray cluster, it's a, it's a Ray framework, which used for open, open GPT, uh, for chat GPT, as well for big uh, AI uh, work, workflows. And they use it for, for FAIR because the idea of FAIR, it can be used on ARM platform uh, like uh, NVIDIA yeah. Orin, or it can be used on x86 big machines with the multiple GPUs. But if you have a small Orin, uh, which is a one GPU, uh, eight CPUs, uh, IoT device, it's a very small one, right? You can put it anywhere. You can create a cluster based on them. And this Ray framework allows us to do that. So when you have a cluster of uh, with IoT devices, it, or it can be even uh, uh, ARM and x86 at the same time in the same cluster, and they all will, 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 will process your AI models. So you have to monitor it somehow. And which is where we use Prometheus and uh, Loki for logs. Loki was, uh, what is it, five years, right, already? Thousands yes. of uh, GitHub stars, and it's great. It's great for all kind of log processing. And uh, that's it. That's our stack. There are <laughs> other technologies we use as well, like a Balena IoT for, for cluster management, but this is the main, main, main observability stack. Yeah, so you mentioned, yeah, we mentioned the, we did the beautiful dashboard. <clears throat> and so we have here the, this is what we submitted um, in, in that. And then we have a, a blog post on that as well that kind of walks through some of the different parts of that. But what we can do, because we have this hosted on our device and this is running at the moment, is we can just go to that exact uh, dashboard. Not that exact one. Oh, we've, cool. We've, we've actually, we've, we've moved past that. Um, we actually have <laughs> other now um, dashboards and such going on there. Um, and But we can walk through sort of and, and show some of the, all of these components working together. Um, I was clicking through and I showed we have our dashboard here that's the Ray cluster dashboard that is using the live streaming that's showing our CPU, GPU, memory temperature of our um, edge computing device that has a GPU on there, but then also was occurring with the node and um, the different nodes in our cluster at this point as well. But this is the home dashboard and this here is the calendar plugin that Mikhail has uh, put together for us. We have our custom panels that we've created. Um, I say we, uh, but I really mean Mikhail has done all of this. Uh, um, and anything that, anything that doesn't work is my fault and is on the back end. Um, I know how that goes. <laughs> but, uh, it, so the rest of this is, is, is really, um, is, is the cycle that we have in the development cycle we have, we're able to put in releases every two weeks with the feedback that we get from Kevin and his research group and from our other collaborators um, around the United States and um, in Europe and at this point. But we have also our pie charts, right? The, the, the pie charts that we we're talking about, but this tells us how many of our GPUs we're using, how many of those CPUs we're using, how much disk space we have available. We have our um, jobs management panel this allows us to um, organize and run things in the background. So um, we have then our model management panel and we support a variety of different uh, AI models. And these are all running on the device that would be connected to the microscope. But for this case, we have it connected here. We'll pull up um, sort of our go-to one, um, which is this one here. And we'll go and click it. And we've got then the panel that comes out, the drawer that comes out that allows us to make all these different kinds of configurations, how much of the GPU we want, do we want to change any of our image processing, do we want to have any of these other model parameters, we also have advanced parameters. So all these things to let the scientists and engineers really to tweak and tune and, and play around with the models to see if they'll work the best and get all of the different um, uh, dots that they're trying to quantitate in that sense. But 
the, we found that the scientists really like this because if you are in the machine learning or AI field, it's a lot of programming that goes into it, and they are not programmers. They are scientists. Mm -hmm. They are trained in how to run those microscopes, to do the experiments, to analyze the data. So they really like what we've now called the click and go um, on the um, system. So here we've spun up the model. We've loaded it onto the GPU. It is idle and ready for us to do an acquisition. We see that we're using one of our GPUs in this case. And I can go ahead and go to our acquisition dashboard. And so this case, the acquisition dashboard allows us to upload individual files. We can do a screen capture. We can also do um, the camera, the webcam. I'm not going to do that because I'm using it for this call. Um, but <laughs> Um, I will see if we can, this is always a little tricky, but I will go ahead and see if we can do this. And we can do a live oh, capture good. of everybody here on the system. <laughs> uh, and I apologize, please ignore anything you're not supposed to see. <laughs> so here we've got, um, we are identifying four people on our call and we've got four people and the model is about 80% confident that there are four people within this field of view. And you saw that I was able to move this oh, box funny. around in the panel. Um, and then we're able to toggle the bounding boxes or we can turn off the segmentation and have just the bounding boxes or we can have the outlines of the people. We of course can change any of the colors. We can change any of those kinds of things um, in there. We've also added the scale bar, which uh, on our team is is the bane of our existence, um, but the scientists are really uh, uh, like because it allows them to convert pixels into nanometers or basically engineering units that are of importance. We see here then in our panel down below, we've got the, our classifications going on. We have our model performance that's occurring. We've got our contrast histogram. Um, that is uh, useful for the scientist to kind of know what is the computer seeing, what is the camera capturing. We see our feature count over time. So this is where we count the number of people walking by um, the, on our ring camera or the defects growing over time as they increase in count. We'll see that plot increase over time. And then we see that we're using the GPU usage. This one kind of goes up and down as the model is streamed the images that we're acquiring using this acquiring um, panel. I can also go over here and I can bring out another drawer. And this is where that interactivity that we've built into it has come in from there. And I can do these different kinds of image processing conditions to convert them into different imaging processing so that maybe the model is better if it was looks like the old school negatives from the photography, or maybe the model is better if it was only grayscale. Right? And so you can play around with these different kinds of conditions while it's streaming and while it's running. So we'll take a moment and just imagine that you're at the microscope and you're trying to do this as opposed to counting people, that you're getting your answer then while you're at the microscope. So you know then, hey, do I need to be at this particular area of my sample? Is this a bad sample to begin with? There's not that time lag that occurs then, right? You, you're getting your answers, you're making your discoveries, at the microscope as opposed to back at your office six months to a year later um, situation. And you can play around with these things. What we learned was that um, many of the scientists would go, they would collect their data, and it's very sort of, um, there's no feedback necessarily. They just go in, they say, okay, I'm going to collect as, as many images, and hopefully one of them will have what I'm looking for in there. Um, what we have found is that they really like this because it tells them, yes, it has something that you're looking for. And we had one instance we were talking with a scientist where they had collected all this data. They had quantitated it manually. They'd gone through, and it was a year and a half. And they find out just before that they collected the wrong data. And they had to go back a year and a half and recollect images and recollect all of that. If they were able to have the answer at the microscope, they could have gotten it um, to their discovery much quicker and much sooner in that case. Wow. Oh, I feel like there, there's so so much to unpack here. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, that's only okay. half. That's only Does half. the model detect the Grafana logos, you know, like on, uh, on, <laughs> on Mihail's uh, shirt there? and uh, on the How many mug. Grafana logos exactly. can you see? <laughs> we, we would be happy to train a model for you to do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, so so... Um, it, 
we were we started off talking about microscopy and images that have to do with sometimes when sometimes they're like medical for medical purposes, sometimes scientific ones, such as the one that you were talking about when you're testing um, different the composition of materials basically um, that they use for the nuclear reactor. So, but it sounds like it's really just any any images. You can really process any sort of images. And you said that you use multiple AI models, um, and I guess that this it looked like the scientists can also choose between which which model they use, and then all of that gets stored in your database, so either TimeScale or Postgres. And then what we're actually seeing is just Grafana visualizing those results. So yes, it kind of okay. Go on, sorry. No, no. Um, so yes, the, we found that the platform works. We started off with microscopy and we started off with the nuclear materials because that's where um, Kevin's research was in. That's where he started. He had the models in there. Um, and all of these models and the microscopists have been playing around and there's a whole community of developing AI models and machine learning models for automating image analysis, specifically in science and engineering. And we were sort of sitting there going, well, we saw that what was happening is you had one group who would develop a model and then the other group would be like, well, that's great. I would love to use that model. How do I use it? And they're like, mm -hmm. you, you know, like you know, the, the answer was, okay, how do we run these models? And so that was what we started off with starting in, in there. And then we found that there's people are, I, I'm sure during this, even during this live stream, three more models have been developed and put out on GitHub. So <laughs> the question was, well, how do we run those models? Like, how do we take advantage of those, the community that's developing and growing around that? And can we have a platform that is the answer to how do I run that model without having to do it all myself is sort of what we came up with. And we found that, that once you do that, you aren't limited to just microscopy, right? You can go to anything that takes a picture and anything that takes an image. And then the concepts of customization that comes from Grafana with the panels and the dashboards, but then also the customization of writing your own plugins allows you to start adding all this other interactivity and all this other uh, customizations that apply to any kind of observability, not only from a, a web stack, but also then to a scientific stack of technologies. Hmm. Can, can you demonstrate that, that like please? You... One more time, because you did okay. this part very quickly, and this is actually the panel I'm proud of. <laughs> oh, which one is it? <laughs> when uh, you go to wait, uh, this is a way, it's a very cool platform uh, plugin, we work with it with my team, that uh, you, when, when you want to try different models how do you choose the model model is it can be 100 megabyte or it can be gigabyte of, of of data inside of it so you cannot really store it in the database so what we did actually we use mm -hmm. web dev technology on a web server so it's like mm -hmm. a file system which you mm -hmm. can access through the through the nginx for example so what we did actually we created a data source and this panel used this data source to access file system on uh, nginx on a reverse proxy nginx right which is one of the most popular and we display this kind of uh, folder structure so based on this folder structure it's very similar to the dashboard uh, in grafana itself it was inspired by that so you have the same elements mm. so so everybody will be very familiar with this dashboards same concept same everything you see there is a card there is a folders up and down but we add an action on top of that when you can rename the models you can do all kind of things create organize so we did almost the same as the dashboard has so yes so this panel it's uh, using special data source which go to the nginx it gets a structure of the data all these models and you see there is a size this one is a small one 14 megabyte or so and then you select the model which one you like you can upload it you can create folders organize and then you just decide okay this is the model i want select it and then you create you specify parameters and you do your acquisition okay please go ahead what do you want to say oh i i wanted to ask how many of these things that we're looking at are community plugins versus private plugins Yes. Uh, so this one is a calendar plugin. Actually, this one was from from Marcus. Marcus originally developed it, and mm -hmm. we enhanced it with a special one. 
uh, special, it's called Big Calendar uh, Module, which is uh, has advanced capabilities. So yes, this is a calendar. We have a tutorial, we follow our plugins, we have the tutorials, they're easy to start, they have a documentation and yeah, the mm. use in the community a lot. So with Balena Supervisor, it's a special one for, for Balena Cloud Provider. We had the application which was not really had a lot of uh, interaction or interest from community. So, but it's still there. And now recently we migrated it to the application itself, but it's open source, anybody can use it. And it allow you to actually, when device actually deployed somewhere, you have access through this uh, Balena platform to see all the Docker containers. And we use Docker containers uh, on these IoT devices. So you can stop, start any containers, Grafana API, and you with the logs panel, you can see the logs and see what, what if it's all good or not good. So this is the Balena supervisor, which we use. The other one, what is the, what was the list? It's so easy, right? To yeah. go back to slides, presentation, type of stuff, <laughs> right? It just feels really na native. Very yeah, good. Grafana as the new PowerPoint, the new presentation. <laughs> no, right. I like it's it. It's going to be a thing. <laughs> yeah. Environment is another one we created. Uh, and it actually was used by, it's a private. You cannot put it in a Grafana cloud because otherwise we will see all Grafana left secrets. Right. <laughs> How they keep <laughs> with the cloud yeah. instances. So, but it's used for, for Kubernetes. When you have when you have a Grafana deployed on multiple instances, you don't really know what instance it deployed on unless you will take a look at these environment variables. And this is how community uses it and we use it as well. We display different information about what kind of device is it, what is the parameters are special and metrics in uh, parameters in the environment variables so it's open source anybody can use it postgres it's sql it's a native one Prometheus native calendar i talk already it's a community plugin and then this is all the uh, uh, hardware stats it's actually based on a web socket it's a community mm -hmm. and everything else with panels and api uh, mdns and tegras tegras stats it's also all private if community is interested, we can make some of them, right? Uh, community oriented, open source, but the private for the API, it's a, it's a property of mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, and then that uh, where you were uh, drilling through to look look for like uh, the different models and that um, you said it was web dev, the mm -hmm. uh, protocol. Yeah. Um, do you have, is that where like you could even uh, put a back end that's S3 buckets or something like yeah. that, as long as they're labeled and... Yeah. I mean, there is, uh, I mean, this is like what kind of plugins uh, we created at Volkov Labs, actually, because mm -hmm. Grafana platform, it's all uh, a lot of observability. Now we are going to this business kind of application, yeah. right? And there is no data source which will allow you to access S3 buckets. But there is a modules, which are uh, like a Node.js modules, right? Or uh, React modules, which allow you to do different things. So yeah. if you park them in the plugin, you can create, and there are many community plugins for all kinds of variety use cases. There is nothing for S3 bucket yet. But in this web dev, it's uh, very specific. We ask community if they will be interested in a file system with web dev. There were some questions that yes, uh, it, there is interest. So we might have this one as a community plugin as well, which will allow you to do different actions when you select the file. But yeah, mm -hmm. WebDAF is, is a great technology and it's allow you to do, there are a lot of use cases you can use it. So. Yeah. So this is almost like you're, you're just using Grafana as a front end, which is really, which is really interesting. Did you at one point consider, I guess this is a Chris question, did you ever think about creating an entirely new application separate, of, separate from Grafana? to do exactly what you needed. So it started out that way. Um, in fact, it very at the very, very beginning, the prototype or what we call the catalyst uh, application that I used to spin up a model, do the acquisition. And um, I created two plots that were in a dashboard and I showed it to my brother and he was like, I want this, let's go, let's do this, let's make it happen. And I was like, great, I do too. I sat down like, but I don't want to create an entire <laughs> dashboard system myself, right? Like, he's like, oh, I want a panel like this and I want a panel there and then yeah. like, but that's just for that one experiment. And I was like, this is, 
uh, you know, I, I am quickly already creating. So I, I literally went out and said, okay, again, visualization, uh, dashboards, customization, Grafana pops up. And I was like, well, there's my answer. That's yeah. what's going to go. So I don't want to say um, I did a, a very quick, like I took a day. I was like, well, let's just see what else is out there. But it clearly Grafana had the momentum in there. And then I, I sort of latched on to this uh, concept of observability. And I recognized that that it wasn't for what we were doing. So the question yeah. ultimately is going to be, could we adapt it for what we wanted to do? And could we make it um, the provide this sort of interactivity? And that's how we then reached, we saw that Mikhail was making these um, panel plugins and, and could do all that. And we're like, okay, that's how we're going to do it. And so the, the rest of the other chances of doing that um, or other applications or other ways of creating the application um, kind of dropped off from there because it was like, well, this is the this is how to do it. Because the other part was I mentioned we have all those microscopes and there are different generations and they have different kinds of requirements to them. But one of those requirements sometimes is you're not allowed to install software on the microscope. Mm -hmm. They're locked down. You can't do anything on it, but they all have a web browser. So I was <laughs> like, okay, we're going to use a web interface to do this because the other way you could do it is that you traditional download, install, you know, native application on the computer, but that isn't going to meet the requirements for the microscope. So we said, okay, can we do it with this web technology? And then along comes, you know, sort of looking at Grafana and then the plugins and it just kind of all came from that. It is cool. That's, it's an awesome use case. Cause I know like, uh, in an earlier uh, Grafana office hours that that Nicole and I were on, we had uh, was it Govable.ai? Yeah, they were on, and they're doing a similar type of thing. Why create yeah. their own user interface? You know, you can sure you can throw something together real quick, a POC with uh, you know Ruby on Rails, and have something there. Mm -hmm. But then you know, then there's the headache or well of maintaining it always. You know, going yeah. forward and and that but uh and then with grafana you've got that flexibility and the power and then the ability to create these plugins and all that so it's uh it's uh pretty cool it is it's it's amazing to see what folks do with this honestly <laughs> and now with the the scenes framework i'm kind of curious are you using the uh, mikhail are you using the uh the seams framework for uh, any of your plugins now or or is that that's the the up and coming things that we don't talk about yet? Or, uh... That's that's a very tricky question. Yeah. <laughs> I will be very careful to <laughs> to talk about it, right? On, on the uh Oh, channel. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, uh, I like the scene. I mean, it's it's great. And uh, uh, I talked with with the team at uh, the Grafana 10 celebration in Stockholm. When uh, on the, uh, that uh, it's uh, uh, Grafana is actually officially out, right? In Grafana, mm -hmm. and it was a long time making. And I see, uh, watching closely the progress, how it's all evolved. The for me, I mean, I mean, it's great. Uh, as a when you create separate application plugins, it's great. It's uh, yeah, you have a lot in the Grafana cloud already, which you use, right? But my problem with the Grafana seems it's uh, there is no customization yet in it. So you have to script the whole your whole dashboard, right? Mm -hmm. And it's totally different from Grafana native experience when you just throw out your, you have your panels and you just customize what, whatever you need, right? As I said, one of the best benefits of Grafana is you can do whatever you need with it. With the scenes, you have to have a developer. Uh, there is no user customization because gotcha. what Chris showed it to you is that we have our templates of the dashboards, but the scientists, they have their own workflow they have our panels and they just create mm. what they need from it right they can move shuffle things around make something bigger something smaller and they'd have totally different configurations that what we plan for their use case and i mean i'm looking forward for grafana 11 when uh, scenes will be actually used for dashboard creation as soon as i understand this is the plan but for now i mean we, I, I wanted to use it it's uh it's still different panels i feel this experience is at the current point of time it's it's better than having separate applications and the yeah. lack of customization for now but technology is great and i'm really looking forward to when it's going to be customizable and dashboard experience will be based on the scenes 
That's that's really interesting. I hadn't considered that because I thought, well, if you had an application that was custom built for your purpose, you probably wouldn't have this idea of workspaces where you know you where the scientist can create their own sort of workflow and then the dashboard to to cater to that workflow. There is someone here that says that scenes is a bit dev centric, so not your for, not for your average user, which is the majority. To be fair, though, I don't think that either of you are average users. This is <laughs> no. a very custom <laughs> use case of Grafana that has required a lot of dev effort. <laughs> right, but I mean, still, I mean, you create your the, with the Grafana. I just want to add to what Chris said before that in with Grafana you have this uh, framework. And this framework has uh, mm -hmm. these uh, pieces to which you just assemble together. A native community, if there is something is missing, you create it. But it, it is much easier and faster, right? And easy to deploy and support and create and everything from, from the scratch. And with uh, and even if you create something, uh, the long term with uh, this uh, community and uh, the development team of Grafana, you will, you will be always behind the new features which Grafana introduced. So even we working full time on the fair platform, we try to keep up with the development Grafana 9, Grafana 9.5, Graf <laughs> Grafana 10, 10.1, 10 right? Now there is a 10.2. 10 and, and yeah. Next week is going to be 10.3 and Grafana already, already breaking things on 10.3. So <laughs> <laughs> they always some things always improving, but still, I mean, to move forward, yeah. you always have to break something. And we yeah. always try to keep up with the new technology, what, Grafana is doing, and we use as much as we can from it. So are these the, the images of the happy scientists that you use? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah. Um, so we've we've deployed at the, these are more pictures of more microscopes. This is the one that um, the Hitachi at the Argonne National Lab. Uh, we were out at Idaho National Lab. This was a, a very early um, example where we were trying to run multiple models at the same time, and each one was a separate panel. Around this time is when um, we reached out to Mikhail and we're like, "We you, we need help. <laughs> this is not a good this is not a good user experience. This is not something that uh, we want to have um, or subject our clients to. Uh, which is each one of these is a is a separate dashboard. Each one is a separate window. We wanted it all in one location. Um, from there, this is at Sandia National Laboratory, um, and you can see. And this is at the University of Michigan. This is the the one that some of those images that we saw the black dots was taken on. Um, and this was, um, this is Priyam, this is Kevin's uh, postdoc at the time, who was one of the, the starters of all of this AI for the TEM and some of the models that uh, you maybe saw listed there from the University of Michigan. He was the one that was like, I don't want to draw boxes around this stuff anymore. Um, so he really, he really, he really kicked this whole thing off um, when it came to that. Uh, situation, but we can see that there's Grafana then at these different locations, and this is one of the early uh, dashboards that, if you look really closely, you can see some of the trends that you're seeing and observing over time as the defects are growing um, for that. And then the same thing is happening here. There again is one of those uh, grayscale images with black dots, and this is um, Robbie who we we subjected him to drawing those to do a comparison of how long did it take him to do it versus the AI model. Uh, <laughs> he got six images in and said, I'm never doing this again. Uh, it just oh, stopped. Wow. <laughs> so uh, that was a, a real big bonus for us uh, in, in that regard. And then this is our, our team as we were at a science conference um, where we launched the product. And then um, the most majority of this work has been sponsored by the US Department of Energy through these various awards. So. Um, I'm required to show that every time. Yeah. <laughs> but Chris, isn't isn't it the grad students you're supposed to have do the manual stuff? That's... Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and they and pay their dues. <laughs> and and we we had originally some pushback of of like the press, professor was definitely like, oh, that's what I did, so you're going to do yeah. it too, you know, situation. <laughs> right. And then we show this to them, and we're like, hey, you could have got that paper out six months sooner. They're like, okay, we're doing this now. You know, if you're not, uh, we, we set out to change that workflow. We wanted to make sure that no one had to draw boxes, whether they were students or, 
or um, technicians or operators or, or even professors had to do that. And then uh, these are just some pictures of the, the platforms that, that we've run on and that we've deployed at those different locations. Um, and we took a, a picture with a thermal imager. This one here had three GPUs. So you can see what's, what's really powering those uh, models as it's running in real time mm -hmm. on there. It was a water-cooled system. Wow. Um, so we were curious about that. And this we call the hot rod. Mikhail took one of his uh, GPUs and just mounted it on our edge computing device here and and said, OK, can we have two GPUs? Can we have a big beefy one and a smaller one? And so we call it the hot rod because it's like, like oh, we're putting this this monster together. And these are different the different generations of the devices that we were playing with. <laughs> That's cool. That that really makes me feel like I should over uh, the Christmas break that I should uh, put <laughs> together my uh, I, I want to do a Raspberry Pi cluster for Kubernetes. And uh, yeah, oh, just yeah. these little uh, little projects here, it really uh, kind of makes me yearn to do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's that's the other part um, that we sort of uh, dealt with, which is the the um, Internet of Things concept, right? So mm -hmm. each one of those uh, devices is is like a Raspberry Pi, but with a GPU on it, right? And that's oh. so there. And there's a, a lot of um, in the Belena community in the Belena cloud, Grafana is used to watch temperature sensors or to create these other sort of environment or home automation dashboards and stuff like that. And that's that was partly another reason for choosing Grafana is that I was sending is I, you know, when I typed into the search engine of, you know, who's, who's out there doing internet of things, observability and, and customization of monitoring these different things. Grafana has been one of those sort of nexus points for that that's as awesome. well. That's, that's so awesome. I really love this like play on the word observability because now we're talking about observability, not of computer systems, but you know, from the point of view of the, the microscope as, as an observer, but also we're getting into the idea that really when it comes down to it, it's not about the collection of data in, in one place that is so powerful. What is actually so powerful is the analysis that it facilitates because you can get inundated with data. So it's not just mm -hmm. about having it in the one place. It's really about making sense of that stuff, whether it's like, you know, metrics from, from different components of an application, or it's like in, in the case of Govable, it's information about the changes in laws as they come out and are amended. Or maybe it's it's like analysis that AI has performed on these little black dots on a, on a white background. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is why we love Grafana, that you have a lot of observability, real observability use cases when you monitor logs, CPU, memory, right? And uh, as I understand uh, by Grafana metrics, it's about 80%, 90%, but the Grafana community is so huge. And even if 10% of a Grafana community looking into business use cases, the scientific use cases, it's such a big use community still looking into these things and and lately uh, that it's actually growing so it's i mean still observability is a big part like mm -hmm. system observability things but it's all kind of technological process it's scientific research to business it's all going there in yeah. order to grafana like why you have to use different bi tools when you can have everything in grafana done and it's much easier so what, what if there's somebody out there who would like to get in touch with one or both of you, say maybe to get, maybe they want one of their own custom plugins for Grafana, or they want to know more about how Thea Scientific uses, can, can really revolutionize this manual process of microscopy analysis. How can they get in contact with you both? Okay. Okay. Go, go ahead. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, you can go. You can um, reach out to me at uh, Chris Field at theascientific.com. Send me an email, um, and I can and we can set up a a, a screen share. We can do a demo. Um, we also will go to conferences, and we we do um, local events. And I'm in the Washington D.C. area, so if you're in that area at any point in time. Uh, we were recently at the Grafana meetup here in the DC area. So we are out there and can attend that. But Chris.field at thescientific.com is the, the best way to reach out to us. Good. 
And for us, it's walkoflove.io. We have a YouTube channel uh, where, where we post everything, everything what we create, different plugins. There is a Grafana crash course and uh, all kind of tutorials and the shorts of everything what we do. So drop us a comment. It's a, one of the best way to to appreciate our work, right? Or you just have a question, just put a comment. Uh, we have a, Vol a Volker Flaps GitHub channel where you have all the open source project, all the issues, all the questions is going there, which will in or feature requests. So there are multiple ways to reach to us as well. But YouTube, it's it's one of the easiest way to go. Awesome. Thank you so much for yes. for coming on. This was this was such a cool look into a really unique use case for Grafana. <laughs> yeah, and I just keep thinking of collaborations here because uh, I, I don't know. I, I've been bringing wanting to bring it up here, Chris. Uh, we should do a collaboration where, like, uh, you know, like at KubeCon or something, we have a, a video camera that's uh, over the sponsor area, and then we figure out how many people are wearing Grafana T-shirts, you know, and uh, yeah. So we, yeah. can, we can figure Count out who we would need logos. to hit up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that yeah. and all the other ones. That's yeah, that'd be great. <laughs> Let's do it. Yeah. And he's well, yeah, like the camera. Yeah, I like these camera. projects. They have no yeah. use for anyone, but you know, but it's <laughs> this, this is what Chris you did, right? At the recent conference where yeah. you, yeah. you set up the uh, camera and just counted how many people were each other was there. Yeah, the yeah, that's yeah, awesome. yeah. We also my Kevin had his iPad and we streamed it from the iPad and he went to people's posters and to other booths and analyzed their data as he was walking around for them because no. they had pictures up there. And he's like, that one's actually wrong or you're off a little bit on that one. Oh, wow. That kind of thing. Awesome. So yeah, we could totally do that. Let's set it up. <laughs> yeah. Well, if, if you do stay on a, a, a minute after we, we leave mm -hmm. the stream, maybe we can talk about that. <laughs> but, um, but we will say goodbye to everyone that's watching. Thank you. And, and the ones that are watching this after the fact, Drop us a comment if, if we get any questions here. We'll make sure to forward them on to, to me, both Mikhail and, and Chris or go over to the YouTube channel of Volkov Labs. That's linked in the description below already. Thank, Thank you. you for watching and catch us next week on the next Grafana Office Hours. Thanks, everyone. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Thank you. <laughs>